how do we keep a positive mindset and move past our limiting beliefs when we have literally $20 to your name, a past due credit card, and all of my auto changes getting denied on my credit card? How do I push past this and still believe I have an abundance of money? Also, what else could I say to replace? I can't afford that. Here's a tough question to always ask yourself. And whenever I have found myself in similar situations in the past, or when I find myself in a frustrating situation or some sort of a plateau, or like something is just feeling like it's not going my way or it's going backwards or, oh my God, things are getting worse, whatever, right? Like we're creating all these stories (laughs) about whatever is happening. Um, I asked myself this really tough question that a lot of people don't like. A lot of people hate this question. And that's why very few people experience transformation in their lives is because they are not willing to ask themselves this question and really sit with this question and really take self accountability and self responsibility for why things are the way that they are in their life. So whenever I have a situation like this, or let's take me back to grandma's couch days, the good old days on grandma's couch is what do I have to believe about myself? What do I have to believe about money, about abundance, about the world, about whatever, insert whatever you need, whatever you want in order to be creating such a reality. So what do I have to believe about X in order to be creating such a reality? Or if it helps you, I really love taking the third person perspective. So I really love to pull myself out of myself and pretend like I'm, I'm my friend. Okay. And I'm an, or I'm just a neutral observer of Catherine's and Kina. And I'm just watching Catherine. This is a very powerful exercise. Like I got the biggest aha moment of my fucking life a couple of weeks ago where I'm like, oh, okay. That makes sense. This is where I need to work. My work is cut out for me here. This is, these are my action steps. I can see it clearly. So you could be like, Hmm, wow. If, um, Jessica was my friend, what does Jessica have to believe about herself in order to be creating such a reality? And that's really where you need to dig in and see where you're giving energy to beliefs that aren't serving you. So when we introduce the limiting belief blaster, that's where I want you to focus on. Bring this frustration to the limiting belief blaster. You have a tool, you have a literal formula. When I talk about the funnel in which you enter the limiting belief blaster, where it could be like something that triggers you a negative emotion or just an area in life that you have a lot of frustration in, you start there with that funnel. And then whatever comes out of that, that's what you want to work on. You asked about, you know, what else you could say to replace. I can't afford that. Well, some of my favorites is instead, you know, subconscious mind loves to answer questions. So instead of being like, why can't I afford that? Be like, how can I afford that? Where are there money manifesting opportunities that I'm just not seeing right now? Because remember, if you're really hyper-focused on all this happening here, what is your RAS going to filter more of? Your RAS is only going to find more of similar reality. And so if you ask yourself, where are the money manifesting opportunities Let's focus on that instead that I'm not seeing right now. And your subconscious mind can't help, but want to answer that question. Where else is there abundance in my life that I'm not allowing myself to see right now? You guys, abundance isn't just in money, though. I know it's awesome. And everyone wants that. And you can have that. Absolutely. But it's also understanding that abundance is a connection to more than enough in all facets of life. And by shifting your focus to, you know, where else do you have an abundance? Do you have an abundance of love in your life? Do you have an abundance of gratitude? Do you have an abundance of clothing? Do you have an abundance of hair on your head, right? Like, (laughs) do you have an abundance of food in your fridge? That will allow you to build a stronger relationship with abundance that you can trust that look, no matter what happens, there's always more than enough. There's always, the universe will always provide and the universe will always replenish. 
And another way of saying, um, this is something that really helped me. And someone did bring this up in the Q and a portion, the questions, which is, um, a lot of people would ask me, Catherine, what if like you're saving your money or you're currently on the manifestation journey and you're like paying off your debt and you just don't have money to spend on like going to a weekend trip to Las Vegas with your friends. What is another way of, instead of telling them, oh, I can't afford that. What is an empowering thing that you can tell them? And it's literally like getting creative and just saying, this isn't in alignment with my priorities right now, but I'm so excited to join you guys next time when it is in alignment with my priorities or yeah, this yacht (laughs) isn't in alignment with my priorities right now, but holy am I so excited to one day be able to purchase it or to be able to charter it in the Mediterranean around the islands of Greece with my whole family and all my friends one day soon. Right. So you're shifting the focus of like, maybe not right now. It's not an alignment right now, but one day it will be, that's all that you need. Remember that tiny piece of evidence, that internal lawyer just needs to focus on the fact that it's going to happen no matter what. It doesn't matter that there's all this other evidence of it never happening. You just need that tiny little piece of evidence that will get you out of jail. (laughs) That will get you out of lack and scarcity jail, right? That's all that you need. And you just need to get really good at arguing for that one little piece of evidence. And I obviously like hearing that um, analogy was so helpful that I love to share it now. Um, and we'll be sharing it from this point forward. But I realized as I was hearing it, the reason why I wanted to share it with you is because it's literally how I've done this. It's how I went from having absolutely nothing, no proof, no one believing in me, just nothing but a freaking dream and a vision. And then literally having my whole dream and my vision, starting from the fucking cot behind my grandma's couch which is just a fun little tidbit of my grandma's couch story is she tried to make me a private space in her living room because I had nowhere else to sleep. And instead of making me feel like I'm couch surfing, she brought a cot from another grandma, Eastern European grandmas. She brought a cot, like literally you guys, like a nap cot or like a, you know, cot that you would sleep on if you're like boot camp training or something like that. And uh, made me like a little bedroom behind her couch, between the couch and the wall. And that was so uncomfortable. But I remember like crying myself to sleeping. Like, is this really what my life looks like? Did I really say no to medical school for this? Did I really say goodbye to beach body coaching for this? Like, did I really say goodbye to living this cozy life at my parents' house for this? Right. It was wild. And I had to find the one little piece of evidence of like, you know what? Everyone in these books that I'm reading, these manifestation books, they say that if you desire something, it's already done. In the energetic world, it's already done. Just because you envision something, your mind doesn't know the difference between what's real and what is imagined. And so who gives a fuck if it's just imagined? I'm going to argue for that. That's where my internal lawyer is going to come in. I don't care if I'm sleeping on a cot right now behind my grandma's couch (laughs) and then moved on my grandma's couch. That doesn't matter. All I need is this tiny little bit of proof, tiny little bit of faith, tiny little bit of belief. And then I just let that grow because that's the seed that I planted into my subconscious mind. And that's all it fucking took. And every day became easier and easier and easier for that little tiny little seed to sprout into a seedling, to sprout into a plant, to sprout into a tree, to sprout into that exact reality that I was dreaming of on my grandma's couch. And of course I live far beyond that reality now, but that's all it took. 